Okay, so before I show you the area we're going to be decorating today, I have someone very special to introduce you to who'll be joining us for today's build. Pascal Jr. So while I was doing some diving, I ran into Pascal. He was looking worn out, being a single dad and all, so I offered to watch his little one for a bit. I explained how he used to be a nanny and daycare worker and teacher, so baby Pascal would be in good hands with me. He seemed relieved to be able to leave them with me for a bit, so yeah, we'll be babysitting this adorable little one today. I'll put the creator code in the video description if you also want to get on the Animal Crossing babysitter roster. There are so many other cute baby characters you can watch. If we do well with Pascal Jr. here, I'm sure we'll have more babysitter gigs in our future. Okay, let me explain our other main activity today. We're going to be decorating Nook's Cranny and the pier. So pretty much the perfect time to be watching little Pascal here because we'll be able to take plenty of swim breaks with them. There's not a ton of area to work with as we are right next to Dobie's farm here, but I'm going to do my best to squeeze what I can in here. There's not much to see right now besides my mess, so let's just get right into the speed build. To start out, I had to order a ton of items for this beach area build, so I did a bunch of shopping and time traveling before I could start decorating. Right off the bat, I got some interesting mail from my villagers. Puddle said she was dreaming about me and I was a bug. I'll let you connect the dots, but the fact that this was written on a heart card and frogs eat bugs seems very suggestive. Right after that ego boost though, I read Antonio's letter where he told me I'm slacking and need to work out more. I sit a lot at my desk for work and YouTube, but I do work out almost every day. Not that it's Antonio's business. So yeah, he is on my bad side right now. Thankfully though, Dobie lifted my spirits back up by being extra adorable. He started talking to the plants, trying to help them grow, but was confused as to whether or not it worked. Like, buddy, you're our farmer. You should know how to keep plants healthy. I guess he's like me. He loves plants and does his best, but just doesn't quite have a good handle on caring for them well. Me too, pal. Me too. Nook's Cranny is a bit too bright and pristine looking for the old fishing pier theme I was going for here, so I wanted to layer some things in the front to make it fit in more. Here I'm trying to figure out how this could work and whether I wanted to use the storefronts or the retro transportation stop. I was initially going to use them to cover the building, but since there's so little space, that didn't leave enough room for me to put other decor in the front, so I eventually nixed that idea. I liked the height and color of the storefronts, but they were looking a bit too country for the vibes I was aiming for. Plus, I used a bunch for Dobie's farm right next to this, and I plan on using more for Shep's totally legal mushroom cabin that'll be behind this. So I figured I'd be going a bit overboard on the storefronts if I used them here too. Instead, I ended up going with the retro transportation stop. The yellow variant matched the color of Nook's cranny, so it seemed like it could be an extension of the building. Nook's is going to be a sort of convenience store meet fish market, and I think the corrugated metal of these transport stops suits that theme quite well. There's sand and salt water everywhere, so having plenty of worn and rusty items just makes sense here. As you can see, this beach is where I've been storing all my extra flowers and crops, so it is a mess over here. Each time I decorate part of my island, I feel like I'm just shoving all my messes further and further back into the corners of my island, and eventually I'm going to run out of space to shove everything. I tend to hoard extra stuff in games and hate throwing things away, so it's going to be painful for me when decorating the back of my island makes me finally confront all the clutter I keep ignoring. Thankfully, today is not that day, and I just continued shoving everything further back into the corners. I did break down and sold some of my extra yellow roses though. They're not hybrids and I don't like the look of the roses anyhow, so I wasn't too pained to get rid of them. My favorite flowers are probably the black lilies, but I also really like the windflowers. I feel like they get a lot of hate that they don't deserve. I'll admit, they are a lot, they are not for everyone. I do wish their colors were a bit more subtle, but I think they're pretty still. Those orange ones? Gorgeous. And tell me that if the white variant wasn't more cream, they wouldn't be littered over every cottage poor island. Yeah, windflowers deserve more love in my opinion. Let me know what you think though. What are your unpopular flower opinions? The front corner of the beach here I made into a little area for whatever fresh fish are being caught that day. I love that little teal bin the nibble fish comes in. I really wish more of the fish and insects came in unique containers like that, or that we could swap what sort of container they're in. Sometimes you really want to display a certain creature, but they come in a lame tank that doesn't look good. 
Please game, just let me cycle through at least a couple tank types so I can display my excessive collection of creatures in more aesthetically pleasing ways. Speaking of, I love that ocean sunfish tank, but it just didn't fit in here unfortunately. I honestly don't think it's going to fit in anywhere on my island, but I love it so much I just can't bring myself to get rid of it. Yeah, the day I have to clean up all my messes and collections to finish this island is going to be a rough time for me. I've seen people put gas pumps on their piers, which I really like, but I have other plans for my pier, so I ended up putting a couple on the sand instead. Which makes more sense anyway, as all the pipes and stuff would have to be run through the ground and you wouldn't have a pump directly on a dock over the water in real life. I actually used to work at a boat dock back in high school. I wasn't very good at it, I don't think. Docking boats and talking on the radio made me so nervous, but I was more than willing to clean anything and pump gas. Probably because I knew how to do that stuff and it meant I was busy, so other people did the radio and boat docking. I did like being outside in the smell of the water and gasoline though, so it was nice to include a little nod to that past summer job here. For the actual pier, I wanted to keep the fish stock theme, but didn't want to just put the typical fishing gear you see most people do. Don't get me wrong, that looks great, but I wanted to do something a little bit different for mine. So I made it into a fish fry shack where they cook up whatever the catch is for that day. This is the spot where the locals grab a cheap meal to eat at some hobbled together tables on the beach. I can already imagine the smell of this place in my mind. All the fresh fish, gasoline from the boats, all mixed together on the ocean breeze. It probably sounds kind of awful to most people, but I think it sounds awesome. My spouse loves the smell of low tide, so I think they would appreciate the aromas of this place too. But maybe we're freaks. Actually, I know we are, but I'm sure there are at least some of you who will agree that this place would have a good scent profile. While I was working on this beach area, I ran into Hazel and Dobie. They don't hang out much, so I had to check in on what they were chatting about. Hazel was asking old man Dobie about his phone, and of course he's not into all that newfangled technology. He mentioned not being able to get the photo film out of his phone and Hazel was so mean, saying he has to get a rock to smash it out. Like holy fuck Hazel, he's just a cute old man, he doesn't know you're being sarcastic. I spoke with Hazel again and she said growing up she used to like getting her elderly neighbors all riled up. So apparently Hazel likes bullying old people. I knew she had a bit of a troublemaker streak, but I was not expecting this. Thankfully, Dobie didn't pick up on the snark though and just went about his day. I get it Hazel, sometimes it's good to push buttons and shake shit up that needs to be questioned, but don't do it maliciously. Especially don't be mean to our sweet old man Dobie. I'm babysitting Pascal Jr, but I think I've got to keep my eye on that girl more than the baby. I wanted to make another dish for this seafood shack, so I collected a few clams and cooked up some chowder to put on the second table. I needed to add a bit more height into the background of this area, so I put in some jail bars and fences to tie things together. I had this standing shop sign I wanted to put next to the pier to advertise the food. It didn't come in a swatch that worked great for a fish shack, so I went with a pasta one. I like the chalkboard style and colors of it, so we can just pretend that the pastas are actually fish stews or something. Here I'm just putting some more detailing around this fish market, then I'll be moving back into the beach directly behind this where I'm going to make a laundromat. My capture card stopped recording for some reason, so you'll see things jump ahead a bit because I don't have footage for the beginning parts of that area. I really struggled with figuring that area out, so it's probably for the best that you've been spared from all that back and forth. We'll take a good look at everything in the tour at the end. Working on the laundromat, I ran into Shep and Hazel. He and Dobie are pals, so I'm thinking he heard what Hazel said to Dobie and decided to put her in her place. He pretty much said she ain't shit because she'd just be some nobody in a film set on Shadow Moss. Yeah. Again, I was not expecting this level of heat coming from our chill stoner boy Shep, but he does not hold back when somebody comes for his buddy Dobie. Here I was thinking this would be a chill beach build to babysit little Pascal during, but everyone's out here setting a bad example for the baby. I guess this ocean air has got them all on their saltiest behavior today. Mm. 
I've got some channel news to share. I've been working on getting things set up so I can start streaming, hopefully within the next week. I'm planning on streaming on Twitch, so if you want to swing by and join me, I'll put a link to my Twitch channel in the video description. I would love to hear your input. Let me know if you're interested in streams, and if so, do you prefer Twitch or YouTube? Please give me all of your opinions because my brain is going to explode with all of the different things I have to think about and plan out for this. Next, I'm working on clearing out the area behind the laundromat and I caught another awesomely creepy bug while I was doing it. I'll be needing a bunch to make into bug models for our witchy swamp area, so this was great. The amount of back and forth I did to Hearth's Island to get things recolored and try out different items while making this laundromat area had me feeling worn out. So when I got to this last little section, I was a bit over it. So I filmed myself putting down the main pieces for this mini beachfront, then did the rest of the finishing touches and pathing off camera so I could undock my switch and get away from my computer finally. I made this spot into a little surfing zone that'll lead off into the swampy, witchy area at the back. I'm not sure how much room I'll want for the other sections, so this beach may change in the future, but it'll work for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the tour so you can see what the final results of these builds look like. All right, Pascal Jr. and I are gonna show you around the finished fish market in here, so let's head over. We're at Dobie's Berry Patch, which leads into the fishing pier area. First, we have Nook's Granny, which is our fish market slash convenience store. I added some custom pathing at the entrance there and in a few other spots around the beach, and that's the only pathing I put in besides a few water puddles. I wanted to save my design slots and honestly don't mind the look of the sand. This way is our dockside dining. It's not fancy, but that's just what this area calls for. Even though I crammed so many decorations along this beach and dock, you can still use the pier and go on cabin tours. Plus, if you're waiting around to take advantage of that save hack I talked about in our last video, you can sit and have a bite to eat while you wait to go on your tour. Moving further back is our boat fueling station. I've got my warp pipe hidden back here too. There's another table for the fishermen to kick back with a beer and some chowder while they watch the sunset after a long day at sea. Laundry on the beach is a classic day for choice, but again, I wanted to put my own twist on it, so back here we have our tiny laundromat. It's a lot of decor in a small area, but you can walk right through the whole thing without having to squeeze through any sections. Coming out the back, we're at the Little Surf Beach. Like I said, the back of this side of the island will be a witchy swamp, and I'm not sure where exactly that's going to start. So this area may change quite a bit when we move on to those sections, but for now, I think it looks quite nice. Alright, that's everything. It was a bit tedious to order all the items and recolor everything for this build, but it was worth it in the end. I have impressed myself with just how many decorations I was able to layer into the small strip of beach in this corner, and I quite like it. Let me just take a load off here and grab some food while we close out. I'll already be returning Pascal Jr. with more sass than he came with, the least I can do is fill his belly. But yeah, let me know what you think of the build in the comments. Also, let me know if you're interested in joining me for streams and what platform you prefer, Twitch or YouTube. And don't forget to send a like my way if you enjoy this video, it is super helpful. Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.